Whew, hot in here. Mm -hmm. Now, so there's a board coming off. You see all the suction cups and positioning. Sure, that's for a lighty, obviously. It looks like a smallie. The blades on these. I can remember can you touch it? it was a 24 grit that they put onto the wheel. So it's okay, that's all supplied by me. It's not a spray on not a so okay. dip. I don't exactly yeah. know how they do it. But yeah, the blades we get from Mickey and from yeah, direct from KPS. Yeah, it's <clears throat> super interesting. It's obviously a circular blade. It spins at speed, so and computerized. So yeah, so now basically you can see the guys setting up the blank and the stoppers to get it in exactly the right place, and then they'll add the suction cups and stuff to make sure the blank stays in the position while it's being cut. We also got an extra tool which adds onto the machine. Um, it will just basically clip onto. See, it's a router top. So you'd have another vertical router, so if guys wanted their fin plugs, leash plugs, and anything cut uh, into their boards, they can pre-design it on their blank, request it, and then you'll get your boards with your plugs and leash plugs cut through. Unreal. Sure. They obviously give your specs. <clears throat> yeah, it's all taken off the file, so the guys need to design it into the file. You'll select your plug if it's FCS2 or anything else. Obviously, I'm supporting FCS. FCS. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so any plug that's available on the Shape uh, 3D program, you can select, put it in, let us know that you want them cut, and then we'll add it in and get them cut for you. Awesome. So Ryan's busy just setting everything up here so the machine can start to cut. This is not for every monkey, that's for sure. There's a lot of experience that's gone into this and learning to get all this stuff 100%. And you can see how well they're lining everything up to prevent the, the uh, blank from flexing um, under the cut, which could cause a twist or something like that in the, in the blank. So centering it and getting it 100% is super, super important. So what model are we cutting here today? Um, this is an FTR for Justin Sykes. It's a model, yeah. FTR yeah. model. Okay, yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah. Okay, 100%. Cool. All right, so I'm in the machine here. So I'm going to get sprayed with foam and stuff. We're just going to show the beginning of the whole process. So yeah, you obviously got to flip it over and then reposition it correctly and then start yeah. the cut. So, yeah. you, so you're looking at what, call it, you're looking at 30 minutes total cut? Yeah, like, okay. especially on the small boards. Like we, sometimes it goes to 20 minutes just on the cutting time. So. Okay, perfect, yeah. thanks. Yeah, so we let that process run through a little bit and then come back and have a look at it when it's a little bit closer to finished. All right, so now we're going to do something which I'm sure very few people have seen. We're going to do a little test on a blank and we're going to check how this blank flexes and see the strength and, and uh, watch it break. And that's what that's without, a, without a stringer. Yeah, so it's a string and it's basically, guys always go, oh the blank goes crap because the, the, my board broke or anything like that. I very much doubt it's the blank's uh, fault, almost in any blank. You see the amount of flex that your blank can take before it breaks compared to the fiberglass and stringer. That's what breaks first and then the foam follows behind it. So because the foam's got so much flex in it. Yeah. Just to give you an idea, okay, if I can get it. Jeez. Jeez. And it's broken top it and bottom. It takes a lot of um, <laughs> force. Force and flex to get it going. Unreal. Okay, so look at that. And there's the other section over there. Yeah, so that's that's pretty interesting, eh? <laughs> These things don't just break for nothing, that's for sure. When the board was when the blank was flexing, you could see that it was flexing on the thinnest where it had been tapered. 
so it was top and bottom and a lot of boards break through the middle or ahead of the fins um, this one's obviously broken in four places because it's not uh, reinforced with the fiberglass but it's interesting to see that that didn't break through the middle because that was actually the strongest part although it is flexing throughout the board so yeah that's it's super interesting I mean, obviously now being able to blow like um, almost uh, to, to size basically for your bank you obviously cut out a lot of wastage from like the original blanks we like in the old days we, we'd be cutting like six sixes out of like seven foot blanks and things like that obviously with the technology and and also your bottom your rockers in the, in the blanks are super important as well so yeah that, that does um i'd like to say things have changed but to be honest with you not really it's uh every guy's design is different the width the thickness the length so trying to match that to a specific blank like a certain blank might not have the width we might need to go to a slightly bigger blank and then yes we end up cutting off a significant amount of foam to get that board out um not the best case scenario but um if the guys want a board that's 24 inches wide and only seven foot long it's not the easiest yeah. thing to achieve um, but to be honest with you some of the molds like the 98 the 92 they're all molds that still from when mm -hmm. Matt wetland physically hand shaped those plugs himself and had those molds built they're still his molds unbelievable so they they they're stretching back into the, like the 60s almost uh, you know, well but maybe not that yeah. that far back but yeah. but possibly 70s late 70s so yeah max started in the 80s in the late 80s i think he was started um but, but midget was in he's involved. met midget in 1964 and that's where everything initiated from so the whole idea was um born in Max's mind in 1964 and from there he brought back the surfing started the Gunston 500 got the competition surfing here in South Africa kept contact with Midget Farrelly all the time um, Midget was blowing blanks back then and from there him and Max um, started off and then Max would have been doing it now for about 30 something years I'll just have to double check yeah it's it's super interesting because because my first um my first introduction to 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 J Bay. I mean, I, we were we had a, a place in St. Francis from the fifties, fifty nine. My folks um, bought the place in St. Francis, which was then Goedgeloof. It's still a pig farm in those days, and um, we had one of the very first units there. And um, obviously, I hadn't been born yet. I was born in sixty one, and my first uh, viewing of of uh, of J Bay was in nineteen sixty nine when Midget Farrelly came over to surf for what was then the World Championships, which was held at the point. And there was absolutely no infrastructure, no roads, no nothing in J Bay. And that was the very first time that I laid um, eyes on, on, on J Bay because I started surfing at around about the age of sort of seven, eight years old. So I was just beginning to my sort of surfing adventure. And yeah, those are, that's going back to those days. I mean, 64, you know, 69, that's way, way back. So yeah, there's an incredible amount of history like in, in all of this. And I mean, the journey, the journey that you guys have been on, you know, it's, this is a product of like years and years and years of, of development. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and it's the passion, like working with Max, I don't think I've known anybody else that has that amount of passion for surfing anything you spoke about from morning to evening if it didn't have something to do with surfing Max wasn't interested at all he's like surfing was super just, passionate yeah. and that passion went into the blanks same as midget as well so every time there was a little bit of a this and a that midget would change something and oh the blanks aren't white enough midget will go and change something oh the blanks aren't hard enough midget will go and change something we had to sit and deal with all these changes as they're going along until where we are now today that it's been probably the standard mix now for the last six years i would say there's been no changes and it's just been phenomenal okay so so the chemicals that you basically getting are a product of what midget has been been doing in australia basically correct, correct yes we purchased directly from midget's family yeah. Sure. So yeah, there's a connection going back for like ages, and I mean, yeah, that's that's super interesting. So there's obviously, I mean, I mean, he's he's been in the industry for, and and still operating. Jeez, and still operating. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's, he used to tease me a lot with the Skype videos, and he would purposely sit with the the camera on the background with these lefts that are just rolling in and being a goofy foot on the left. <laughs> Whatever left hog. 
So like, um, he would purposely sit and turn the camera and Skype and talk to me and I would just be looking straight past him at his left, <laughs> breaking in the background and have to ask him two or three times to repeat himself because I wouldn't be listening. <laughs> but like, yeah, no, it was uh, all good times. <laughs> uh, awesome, man. Yeah, uh, freaking, man, that, when you sit and talk to these guys and, and, and just and just go back in time, it, it's, it's just amazing. And, and there's just, there's, there's so much that is lost like on the generation and people you know and you look at stuff today and it all looks like a pop-out thing and it just happens you know it's almost like you just push a button but but this just so much that's gone into it over the years you know you, it, this just gets lost and forgotten and the kids today don't even understand it you know and it's it's insane to come and just sit and talk to these guys and listen to what they have to say it's been like i spent a morning here and i've probably never been so entertained in in like in ages you know just just listening to that's super interesting yeah, it's, it all looks like a simple process, but um, there's so much time and, and, and R&D and everything that's gone into these blanks. And I mean, you were saying that uh, you guys have been running for, for how long? You guys so, have been operating here? Yeah, Surf Blank South Africa, Max opened it in 1988. So we've been running for 36 years. Uh, Midget started Surf Blanks in Australia in 1968. So surf, uh, surf Blanks, in essence, has been running for 56 years. So, um, especially the chemicals and the development of the chemicals and stuff from it for blowing the blanks. Yeah, so the history is definitely forged into the company. And um, yeah, we want to be able to stick with the legacy that um, Max and Midget had set. And one of them is also. One makes one of our blanks so special compared to the others is our change in density throughout the blank. So if you can actually look in the center, you'll notice that you press on the outsides of the blank, it's really hard, and when you press on the center, you can see it will dip in. That center core being softer allows the top deck and bottom de deck to stretch and flex independently from each other. So the top deck can compress while the bottom deck stretches. Um, without being affected from the center of the board. Um, that's where the, our recoil and everything that we were speaking about before comes into play. Yeah, so that sort of that flex and getting the right flex and that obviously varies from the different, from the different blank colors, you know, the different yes. density blanks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, awesome. Okay, another thing that's, 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 that's come up, which is, which is super important, a lot of people wouldn't know, is that these blanks are actually individually um, produced with, obviously with the, the um, the, the different stringers for different flex and then on top of that the, the the rockers of the stringers that are put into the blanks are custom for the different models and the different manufacturers so not, these blanks aren't just mass produced to be exactly the same and sent to everybody and then they cut from that these they're actually pre-ordered yeah every yeah we only blow to order we only manufacture to order um every order is custom so like um Every guy's got different models that will have different rocker curves. Each rocker curve has to match the blank correctly to get it out, otherwise you're not going to get the board. So each customer has specific curves, which we showed before, it's all CNC processed, uh, um, machine cuts and um, glued up to their specific requirements. So some guys might have a quarter inch less in the nose or a quarter inch extra in the nose. The tails might be slightly different, especially when it comes to the long boards. The long board rocker curves vary a lot. So to get that correct, it's um, not always an easy task. And um, yeah, it's vital for the industry to get what they want. Awesome, man. Okay, so that's a top cut of the board. We've got the machine off. Obviously, they're about to flip it over. But you can see the whole plan cut. Everything's been done. It'll now be flipped over, repositioned, and then start the cut on the on the other side. Yeah, so you can see the machine cut lines, and that's what's going to be screened out and finished. If you can see it's, I mean, they pretty much you could pretty much just glass these boards and ride them. Eh? I mean, there's, eh? I mean, the curves in, everything's in, the rails are done. It's just a matter of cleaning it up. Pretty much. We well, look at like soft tops today. I mean, they. Like, nowhere near as refined as this and those boards work so you could glue that i mean you could you could definitely surf that board and uh i think travis can set the machine too where they you can, definitely don't yeah, have to get a, get a much yeah. cleaner cut so uh, ryan was saying that uh, he can get a board out in like about 20 minutes to half an hour 
if we had to change our times and like say we had to spend an hour on each board, you would probably be able to glass that board directly as it comes out for machine. So it's that, it's that close? Yeah. It's that close, yeah. Sure. Okay. So yeah, that's a bit of an insight into, into how well these machines cut these uh, blanks today. Some uh, shapers don't uh, order the fully finished rails and you can see that the inside rail, the bottom rail, hasn't been cut. So they've basically just chamfered the top rail so that the shaper can finish it himself to his custom um, design that he wants to put into the board. So yeah, that's just, this is sort of a, a semi-finished. So you've got the rocker in and everything, but uh, hasn't done the finishing on the inside of your rollover onto the bottom deck. So yeah, very interesting. Different people, different yeah. strokes. Okay, so these are finished, finished cuts on, on some of the different boards and you can see there's, there's different string of colors and there's different string of uh, this one here, yeah. you'll be looking at a 4 mil standard OB stringer. The one behind it, that's a 3 mil red, white, red. So this one's got a 2 mil OB in the center and it's got a uh, half, half mil sapili ply on the edges. It's a uh, harder wood which stiffens up the stringer a bit. So it stiff changes your flex pattern to um, something where you would want to ride where it's a little bit more choppy and you want a bit more quicker response out of your board. Um, clean a good surf, you would want uh, a better recoil, a slower recoil like the Formula Beach would have. Um, you would get through to the Black Stringers. The Black Stringers is one of the latest uh, craze on the market. Everybody's been wanting to order Black Stringers. So we do do a mix up. This is actually a red, black, red. So it's the same as the Obiche, but we've colored the Obiche with the black color. And then you'll go to the formal standard Obiche, which has been colored black. The heavier one at the back there, yeah. what's, that, what's that there? Is that the formal? These are all seem to be formal. We haven't oh, gone stepped up to any six mil, and then we've got back to a three mil. Okay. So yeah, some guys on the longer step up boards like this would end up putting a six mil in, but it's as guys uh, what they request. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. We're gonna head off. I've got some other stuff to go and film. Um, so yeah, that's just been an awesome, awesome uh, morning here with with Travis and just uh, just checking this whole thing out. It's been super fun chatting to you guys. I've learned a lot, and there's been some really interesting stuff covered. So yeah, hope you guys are gonna enjoy this. Next week we take a drive down the road and we go and visit uh, Jay's factory. His new factory has just uh, moved into the uh, Bolt uh, Surfboards International or Bolt International. Yeah, we get to meet some of the staff and the shapers there. Yeah, so we're at Jay's factory now. Bolt, all their brands that they run. So make sure you subscribe, hit the notification bell and join us then. Thanks for watching as always, ciao for now.